welcome back to You Are Awesome and You Can Do Anything You Put Your Mind To, the podcast where I am your host, Margaret. And as always, if we have not met before, hello, I am Margaret. I go by Margaret Elizabeth here on YouTube and really on social media everywhere. Um, Elizabeth is just my middle name, but my first name is Margaret. You can call me Margaret because I go by Margaret. I don't go by Maggie or anything else like that. And we're here in our fourth episode of the podcast. And like I always say at the beginning of these episodes, if you're seeing this episode, that means that I have successfully made this podcast happen and it's going to be a thing and I am going to stick with it. If you are just joining me for this first episode, I have wanted to start a podcast for what feels like a long time, but I have a bad habit of wanting to do everything all the time and like trying something and then not follow through on it. I have a really bad habit of um, not following through. So I wanted to create a podcast and what first started off as like kind of like a fake podcast because I saw Anna Sitar make a YouTube video about like, you know, this is what it would be like if I had a podcast. I was like, haha, maybe. I'll I'll make one podcast episode like that and then kind of go from there. I set kind of like a goal or an intention for myself to film, edit, create, upload, schedule five episodes before I would even like tell you guys about it because I wanted to really make sure that it's something that I could fit into my schedule. It's something I could realistically do. It's something that, you know, I, I'd have things to talk about. <laughs> for these episodes because it's really just going to be me until I decide it's time to get like a full podcast set up. I only have one microphone, so I'd like to have guests in the future, but it'll have to really be a future thing because again, the whole one microphone thing makes it kind of difficult. And I don't have like the full podcast set up. I just, you know, it's just me and it, the audio and I feel like I've rambled on a little bit, a little, little bit, little long for, <laughs> for this. But if you've never met me before, I am a little bit rambly. I like to talk. Sometimes I have a difficult time getting to the point, but I love to watch podcasts that are in a video format. So this is why we are here. I love creating YouTube videos. I love being on YouTube. I love doing this whole thing. And some of you have sweatshirts. Some of you have asked for podcasts in the past. And I think I've just been kind of hesitant to start something new, but you know, it's always something that's been in the back of my head. So I'm glad that we're here. And if we got to episode for surely I feel confident that I can make it to episode five and like really make this a thing. My goal, I'm going on vacation at the end of August. So my goal is to have five, maybe even six episodes like set and ready to go so that, you know, we can really pump it out and make it a thing. Before we get into the kind of questions to lead into today's episodes, or <laughs> to lead into today's episode, I wanted to say kind of at the top, something that I have been thinking about a lot and kind of grappling with. And I know we've, we've touched on a lot of things in the first three episodes in terms of career and failure. We've talked a little bit about content creation, my journey, how I ended up where I am. And I have had a hard time articulating this recently. I think, but I am trying to find ways to make creating content a little bit more fun for myself. I believe I maybe talked about this in the last couple of episodes, but when I first started creating content, it was like something fun for me to do. It was a side hobby. And then it turned into a part of my job and I'm almost trying to like turn it back into a hobby. So it's a little bit more fun for me because the second things become, you know, business and work, you just, you lose a sense of excitement and a sense of adventure and uh, the content all like all revolves around making money and you know supporting the business and all of that so I'm working really hard on finding ways to create content and create content that I enjoy making to create content that you enjoy consuming I know I tried to do that a little bit earlier in the year with my self-care series and it just kind of I don't know it was a little bit lackluster I think for me it's difficult to put out videos that I want to put out because they never perform form well, but 
I am going to say this now and hopefully it'll stick with me. The metrics don't matter because if I'm creating something that I enjoy and I have good faith that you will enjoy it, you know, it's a video for our community and maybe it's not a video that's going to grow the audience and that's okay. Anyway, so I'm trying really hard to um, get back into creating content in a fun and enjoyable way for me and take the pressure off of it. And I think that's why a video podcast is actually very like fun and exciting for me because because I can just sit down and I can talk, I can let the thoughts come out of my brain, out of my mouth and onto the SD card to then edit and upload to the internet. So it's it's fun, I'm having fun, I am enjoying it. I just finished editing um, episode three and uh, while it was very rambly and ranty, I don't think we'll ever have an episode that's not rambly and ranty. It was very um, long-winded, I think, but I think we did get a lot of good points out there. Um, and if you have listened to all of the episodes thus far, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know if you guys are enjoying these podcast episodes or just these videos in general. I know the last time I, I kind of put it out there that, you know, I was thinking of maybe starting a podcast or I don't even know if I said that, but I asked you guys how you felt about podcasts. A lot of you said you don't listen to podcasts, but I'm thinking like if you're sitting through a 20 minute long vlog, you'll, you'll watch a, a video podcast probably. Maybe if I don't position it to you like that, but if I'm just like, hey, it's a 40 minute long vlog, what do you think? I think you would like that. Let me know how you are feeling about the podcast, what you're thinking. I'm hoping for episode five, I can get you guys involved a little bit. I'm still not entirely sure how, but I would like this podcast to really be a two-way street. I think it's kind of difficult right now because I'm filming these episodes in secret and you guys don't even know that it's coming. So I can't quite ask you for feedback and get that like real-time feedback in the real-time comment. But um, now is a good time. Tell me anything that you want me to know, anything you want me to talk about. I would love to, I almost want to like give advice on things you guys feel like you need advice on or just, you know, talk about whatever. So let me know in the comments. I'm having a fun time. Can you tell? Yes, I did have two coffees today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's jump into these four questions that we are going to start every podcast episode with. I feel like my energy is just like on a high today. Okay, first question. What's something new that you want to try? Something new I want to try. Something new that I want to try and that I am going to be trying tomorrow. My husband and I found a new restaurant that we really like in St. Louis. We found it last week. We're going back tomorrow to try their pizza because we are big pizza people and Friday night is pizza night. Tomorrow's Friday. So I, I'll, I'll do that. That's, that's my new thing that I want to try. It's a pizza from, um, Guido's food was very good last week. So I'm excited for the pizza. We saw it coming out. It looked really good. That'll be my new thing. That's, I feel like that's kind of, um, <laughs> Kind of an easy one, kind of a little bit of a cop out, but what's holding you back from trying? Ah, uh, see, that's where it doesn't apply. Okay, let me try, let me try a new thing. What is something new that you want to try? You know, I'll say this from more of like a, a business and content creating perspective, something new that I want to try is like trying to create content for brands and um, creating like sponsored content. I've never done sponsored content ever. I, I don't think I have a brand unfriendly account. Like I think the content I produce is pretty like agreeable, um, but I've just, I've never really had the opportunity to present itself. Although I kind of had, I mean, I have, like I've had people email me and they want to work with me, but then they don't want to pay me. And I can't quite, I can't quite do that when I'm operating a business, but that is something I do want to try is like creating sponsored content and working with a brand. I think that would be really fun for me. And the thing that's holding me back from trying that, I think, I don't know where to start. I feel a little bit lost in the process. I don't necessarily feel like my content is always that strong. Like, I don't think I have strong sales content in terms of like creating something that will make you guys want to buy something from a brand. I think that's kind of what's holding me back. Almost like my inner, inner fear and doubt, the unknowingness of it all, um, feeling like I just don't know how to do it. I think that that is a big thing that holds me back from doing that 
at all. Although I would love to, and I would love to try and just see how it goes because it, everyone makes it look like a whole lot of fun to do sponsored content. And I finally have 10,000 followers on Instagram. I feel like that was, you know, a big, a big uh, milestone for me. Okay, what's something new you've tried this week? Oh no, what's something new you've enjoyed this week? Like I, it clearly says enjoyed, but I said read tried. Okay, something new that I have enjoyed this week. I think editing, editing the podcast. I really, I enjoyed that. I did that today. Um, editing video in general, I think this week, I've really enjoyed it. I had been sitting on a vlog from July that I finally edited and uploaded and got out there. And I am rediscovering how much I really enjoy the vlog process. But for some reason, it is so difficult for me to like pull out the vlog camera and talk and show what's going on and, and do all of that stuff. But yeah, that's something I really did enjoy this week. I think, um, I like, I really like the vlogs. I really do. I think they're very special and they make me feel very connected to you. So I am going to try and do a little bit more. It's funny. I had somebody comment on this past vlog and they were like, well, couldn't, couldn't you just try for like one Pilates workout and one vlog a week on YouTube? I'm like, I, I could try for it, but you realize you're asking for two videos a week and I am barely able to get one video out a week right now. So that's kind of a big ask. Like, I don't know that, um, I, I know you guys know that it's a lot of work to put together videos and upload them and get all of the back end stuff going, but it is like, it's a lot, a lot of work. And I, I just laughed at that comment. I'm like, oh, you were so, you are so sweet. And I love that you want to see more from me. But right now this is just what we're working with. Like ideally I would love to have a vlog every week, but man, I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, long winded, long winded response to say the thing I enjoyed this week was putting together the vlog, uploading and, uh, you know, uh, talking with you guys in the comments. What's something you've been putting off and need to put your mind to? Well, I'm happy to report from last week, I said I was putting off some emails and some hard conversations. I'm happy to report, I finally got those things out of the way. By the time you guys are seeing this episode, I will have started a new in-person job uh, at a at a big gym. I don't know if I want to tell you guys where I work, but I'm I'm going to be working at a like a big a big box gym that has um Pilates and I will have started by the time you guys see this episode. I'll be like about at the end of my first month of this new job by the by the time you guys see this episode. So anyway, so I am starting a new job, so I had to um actually there's there's this whole thing with this job. It kind of it turned into like a month long interview process and I initially didn't want to have to leave the studio job that I am at now, but this new job kind of gave me an offer that I couldn't refuse. And they said, you know, we'll, we'll give you what you want if you give us what we want and you leave the studio and you just kind of um, teach for us basically full time. So I had to make that hard, <laughs> really hard decision, have that really tough conversation, but I did, I got it out of the way. I, you know, got my end date at the studio that I'm at, I'm going on vacation and then I get to start fresh when I come back. So I'm happy to report that although it was a very uncomfortable conversation, I really didn't enjoy it. And some, you know, it just, it wasn't fun, but it did happen and I got it over with. Um, I'm proud of myself for that because I tend to put things off for like a long time, but something I have been putting off, I'm going to say two things. The one thing, and this is so stupid, but um, I have gone to a new rheumatologist here in St. Louis because of my rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know that we've talked a whole lot in depth about that yet on the podcast, but I went to a new rheumatologist and they asked me if I could have my rheumatologist in Phoenix send them my medical records and I haven't gotten that done yet. And I've been putting it off, I think just because the process of it is annoying. Like I tried to look into it today and you would think you could just ask them to fax it and they would, but it didn't seem like that was the route to take. So that was a little irritating, um, but I haven't gotten that done. I also need to take a return to anthropology and I don't, I don't know that I'd say I'd, I've necessarily been putting it off for a really long time, but like I've had two opportunities this week where I could have just gone and done it and I didn't. So I'm putting that off and I need to get those two things done. And that will wrap up this first segment. Today, what I wanted to talk about, this is gonna be kind of a more um, health, 
fitness Pilates focused episode. I'm going to try not to make all of these episodes like really focused in Pilates unless, unless you guys want to talk about that stuff. I'm more than happy to talk about Pilates. You know me. I love Pilates. It's my job. It's my, it's my life. It's my everything. But uh, like I said, with creating content, I'm trying to create things that I want to create and that bring me joy and that don't necessarily feel like work. And boy, do I love Pilates, but it is my full-time job. So today we are going to be talking about Pilates and uh, working out and fitness and all of that kind of stuff because um, I have, well, I shared recently in, in a vlog that I have been incorporating like more weightlifting and weight training into my Pilates routine. And I got, I really just got one question about it. And they asked, you know, why is it that you're doing more weight training now than you had before? Is Pilates like not a complete workout? Like, you know, what's the deal? And I just, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about my personal fitness routine and how it has evolved and how I have like gotten to the routine that I'm at right now. Because as, as somebody who it's their full-time job to teach Pilates, I get so many questions about what my personal routine routine is and also like what my opinion on, is on like what the perfect kind of fitness routine is. So I, I, I just want to talk about it a little bit. I think um, first, firstly, I have a hard time coming up with like topics to talk about that I'll be able to talk about for longer than maybe 20 minutes or so. Although there's nothing wrong with a 20 minute podcast episode, but I want to give you guys, you know, meaty episodes that we can really, you know, dive into something and talk about it and have, have meaningful conversations. And it will give you guys some, some stuff to, to marinate on and think about and talk about in the comments. I really, I, I'm striving to give you guys that in the podcast episodes and I have to go off on this tangent. I am not a huge planner when it comes to planning my content or scripting videos, or I barely even plan like my classes anymore. I plan them in my head, but I don't plan them on paper. And I think that's something that has been difficult for me with podcasting because I don't have like an outline. I just kind of like think of it and I go, but anyway, I, I digress. We're going to talk about fitness, health and fitness and Pilates. We'll, we'll start kind of just looking at my fitness routine and what it has looked like over the years. I really started working out when I was in college. That's really when I started to get into, into a fitness routine. And I think for me, when I started working out, it always kind of came from a spot of wanting to change how I look. It came from a place of not liking who I was, not liking how I felt in my body, just like not liking what I saw in the mirror. And uh, this was, I mean, when I was probably 19 or 20, uh, when I like first started going to the gym, I would go to the rec center at my university and I would just like walk on the treadmill on an incline or I would do the elliptical and uh, that was it. Like, cause that was all I really felt comfortable doing. Um, I went to a big university, University of Arizona, and uh, we probably had, I don't know, 40,000 people in the student body that even sounds like not that many, but a lot of people, right. Went to school with me. Our rec center was enormous. It was a little bit intimidating. And I think for me, I get nervous going into a setting where I don't know like the inner workings of it. So like going to the rec center for the first time, I was like par almost paralyzed to go because I didn't know like how I got in. I didn't know if my cat card was going to work. I didn't know where the machines were. Like, was I going to have to go upstairs? What was I going to have to do? So I found like some cardio equipment that was kind of hidden almost it wasn't in the uh, the big the big gym area and I would just like do the elliptical for an hour and I did that like for my freshman year of college I did that going into my sophomore year of college in my junior year of college I got much more into fitness and weightlifting. I started to do like a little bit of free weights. I started to play around with like creating my own workout routines and using interval timers and, you know, doing body weight workouts and ab workouts and just kind of all of that. I really got into that in my junior year. So I was about 20 this. Oh my God, I cannot believe this was so long ago. So this was like eight years ago that I really started to develop a solid fitness routine. Um, I was living at my, my 
sorority's house on campus with like 56 other women. I would wake up in the morning and I would, ooh, I was kind of into running at this point, but I would wake up in the morning and I would go to the gym and, or the rec center. I'd wake up at like six, the rec center opens at six. I would do maybe like a 10 minute warm up on the elliptical and then I'd go through like a light weightlifting circuit because I didn't know a whole lot about weightlifting. I think maybe at this point I had like bought a weightlifting guide from Grace Fit UK over the summer and I was like doing that at the gym with my mom but I hadn't like I was just starting to dip my toe into weightlifting. Like I didn't know what I would be able to do. I didn't necessarily know how to do things right. But that is kind of the point that I started to really get into fitness. And it was like really exciting for me. I continued to, you know, work out and be on my, you know, fitness regimen through my senior year of college. And then even Gosh, even as I started to have my joint pain and as my RA started to develop and come to fruition, I was still going to the gym like every day. My my brain got a little bit messed up in thinking that I like had to work out every day in order to maintain the habit and in order to like maintain a, a healthy lifestyle. But I was going to the gym, I think five days a week. Sometimes I would even go on Saturdays, but usually I, I wouldn't go on the weekend. But that is like when I really started to get into fitness and coming out of college, I was still weightlifting. It was pretty light weightlifting. It wasn't anything crazy. I wasn't over here like squatting a hundred pounds like I just I wasn't it was pretty light weights but it was weightlifting and that's what I liked because the people that I followed online were like Whitney Simmons and Nikki Blackgetter and who else did I follow on like Grace Fit UK when she was you know at at uni and doing you know doing all of her workouts workouts and making the Grace Fit guides I was like super into weightlifting and I think what put a big wrench into that for me was my RA because it really like it limited what I could do. I couldn't tuck my toes. I couldn't hold a plank without being in a lot of pain. Like I couldn't do lunges. I had to do everything with my feet on the ground or else I was in like excruciating pain. So I'd say about a year post grad, I was still weightlifting and I was still trying to be like pretty active, but I was limited in a lot of the things I could do. Like I couldn't do a lot of cardio because I couldn't be on my feet for that long. It irritated my ankles. It irritated my joints. So I was weightlifting, but I still wasn't feeling like that good. And I always felt like I didn't see like that much progress in my muscle and how I looked in my physique. Like I just kind of felt blah about myself. But now when I look back, I'm like, yeah, I was probably overdoing it. But that's a, another thing to dissect for another time. I started to get into Pilates in May of 2018. I went with my mom to my first reformer Pilates class. And at first, like I just had the thought of like, well, this isn't a workout. Like I don't want to spend my money on going to a Pilates class because it's not a workout. It's not a workout, but I went to a couple more. I started to feel pretty good about it and I incorporated it into my routine, but I would like go to the gym in the morning and then in the evening I would take a Pilates class. And I did that for probably like, I don't know, until I became a Pilates instructor. So I was doing that for maybe like six to eight months. And then when I went through teacher training at the studio I was going to, and I started to teach part-time, I like quit my gym membership and I was like, well, if I'm going to be a teacher, I'm just going to try and like just do Pilates and see how it goes. Because in my head, if I am a Pilates instructor, why wouldn't I just be doing Pilates? So I tried to incorporate like a lot more Pilates. I was still doing some weightlifting, not a lot, because when I first started teaching Pilates, I was at a full-time job where I was traveling a lot. So I would go to the gym at the hotels that I was staying at. I would do a little bit of weightlifting really just to like keep my, my physical fitness up. Not necessarily because I was, was like super into weightlifting. Yeah, I, I was kind of doing a little bit of both for a while and then the weightlifting kind of phased out for a little bit. And then I was just, I was only doing Pilates for honestly a pretty long time. I'd say the second half of 2019 into 2020, 
come quarantine, I kind of took like a break from working out altogether. Uh, and then I got back into fitness with Sydney Cummings because I kind of like resented Pilates a little bit, like see episode one for me getting fired from my Pilates job. But I like started to do Sydney Cummings workouts and kind of went from there. And then I slowly got back into Pilates when I went back to teaching in person in 2021. And that's when I like, was only doing Pilates. Like I would go take a reformer Pilates class before I taught three or four classes in a row, I would come home and then I would teach a virtual mat Pilates class. So I was doing a lot of Pilates and in 2021, I started my 500 hour comprehensive training, which was a lot of like having to do Pilates. It was a lot of physical practice. It was a lot of just like physical stuff for the whole training. So I would say like 2021 was like my like most active Pilates year. And it was the year that I was just doing Pilates going into, oh God, 2022. This is last year. You know, I was just doing Pilates for a really long time. And I think when I moved from Arizona to Colorado, I found it difficult to maintain a fitness routine a fitness routine, just like period, but like, especially maintain a Pilates routine because I wasn't going to go take classes. Like before I taught, I didn't try and find a Pilates studio when I was living in Colorado. Like I, and I think because of that, I found it really difficult to maintain a Pilates practice or like build a Pilates practice from home. It was really hard for me. So I kind of, I lost a little bit of my, my personal practice. It's almost like I needed a breather from Pilates to like, really make sure I liked it, you know, before I fully dove into um, teaching Pilates full time from home. I continued to have like a pretty inconsistent at home Pilates practice, but I was teaching virtual classes. I was filming classes. I got my reformer at home. So like I was working out, but it wasn't in like a, uh, it wasn't in a, like a structured routine kind of way. I was working out like kind of as a byproduct of my job. And this kind of went on for all of last year. Like I tried to rebuild build and recreate a fitness routine for myself, but I always kind of fell flat because, because at this point, my online um, Pilates business was my full-time job. I felt a little bit burnt out on Pilates. Like I couldn't focus taking somebody else's class. All I was thinking about was work. It was hard for me to like go through my own flows and just like, it was just, it was really hard. So I had kind of a wishy-washy fitness routine last year, but it was primarily Pilates. And then come like September, October of last year, I was like, well, maybe I'll, I'll try a different kind of workout and see if I like doing that better because that way I'm not thinking about work. I'm able to like give myself an hour of my day, like just to myself that I can be alone with my thoughts. I don't have to think about Pilates. I don't have to think about working. I don't have to think about creating a class. So that's when I started to do classes with Lindsay Herod and she does weightlifting class it like it's it is weight training or lifting heavy weights like doing all of that i did that for about three months last year and then and then i just kind of stopped and i fell flat and decided i wanted wanted to get back into pilates this is how routines go for a lot of people right what i'm saying i'm sure you have felt this way at some point or another your fitness routine and your fitness journey is not linear so what I'm describing, you know, there's like peaks and valleys in the fitness routine where you feel like you've really got it on lock. And then there are other times that you completely fall off and feel like you need to just like constantly get back on the wagon. That is very normal. It's very normal. <laughs> and I think what helps to create a consistent fitness routine is to find something that you actually like doing. You know, you wake up in the morning or you go do your workout at whatever time you feel like you, you know, works for you. You get to that spot and you're like, ah, oh, I'm excited to be here, let's go. I digress. At the beginning of this year, I started to try and get back into my personal Pilates routine. I was taking classes online with Amanda Blauer and with Lottie Murphy, who I love both of them dearly. And you know, I, I was able to do that and maintain that for a little bit. I think the, the thing that was difficult for me that I don't know that I realized it while it was happening, I was mentally not very 
very good for most of last year. And I, I almost feel like I was trying to get back into a fitness routine as a way of like putting a bandaid on it and saying like, no, you're okay. Like you're taking time for yourself. You're taking care of yourself. Look at you, you've got a Pilates routine and you've got it on lock. You're good, don't worry about it. It kind of like looking from the outside in now, it kind of feels like I was maybe just putting a bandaid on things and not actually figuring out what was going on. But again, I kind of had a wishy-washy routine and then we, but it was primarily Pilates, that's the point, right? It was wishy-washy, but it was primarily Pilates. And even when I had done Lindsay Harrod's workouts last year, I was doing maybe two or three a week, and then I was doing Pilates on the other day. So it was still primarily Pilates and a little bit of weightlifting just for some variety and overall enjoyment for me. Now, fast forward to when we moved into this house in April, I still really didn't have a fitness routine because I was filming what felt like a billion classes for the April challenge that we were doing when we moved. We went on vacation in May and when we came back, I just felt like I, I needed to get into a morning routine that made me feel excited. It made me feel like I was starting my day off on the right foot. It made me feel like I was giving myself time before I went to go teach a class. Like I just needed to do something that would help me to get my mind right and help me to feel settled where we were. And I decided when we got back from vacation in May, I was like, you know what? I'm going back to Lindsay Harrod's classes because I know the formats. I know that I, I like them. I, you know, I know all of these things about it and I'll start off really small. So I started off doing like three classes a week with her. And at that point, like that's all I was doing. I was doing those three classes a week. I wasn't working out at all out. Well, maybe a little bit outside of that because I was going to the studio that I am now teaching at. Well, now for me, but not now for you. I was going to take classes in person and I was, you know, doing her classes at home in the mornings and I got into a really good routine. And after I had been doing that, for three months, then I started to add in more classes with her. And I also started to add in Pilates classes at home. So right now, my fitness routine looks like a mix of weight training and Pilates. I probably do a weight training class with Lindsay Harrod three to four times a week. And I do Pilates maybe two or three times a week, depending on the week. This week, for example, I did a Pilates class on Monday. I did 30 minutes of Pilates because that's what I had time and energy and the brain capacity for. Tuesday, I did a weightlifting class. Wednesday, I did a weightlifting class. Thursday, I did weightlifting. Friday's gonna be Pilates. And if I decide to work out on Saturday, it'll just kind of be a wild card. And that's what it looks like right now for me. The reason that I do Pilates and the weight training together like I said, is to A, give myself time to take care of my mind, to take care of my body, to be removed from work. The weight training helps me to do that. And I work out in the morning. I wake up at 6 a.m. and work out because that is the, like that's the time that I feel like I can give to myself before I, I jump into work. It's very difficult for me to work out like in the middle of the day or in the evening. I'm just not as mentally there. But the combination of weightlifting and Pilates for me has really, has really worked. And I don't say worked in terms of like, it's giving me results. Like it works in that it makes me feel challenged. It makes me feel energized. It makes me feel strong. When I'm taking a Pilates class, I'm not necessarily feeling like I'm working while I'm doing it. Am I kind of? Sure, sure. But the mix I think is really helpful for me because what, what I do in a Pilates class and what I teach in a Pilates class, all of those things come into play when I'm weightlifting, I'm better able to control my, my core, connect into my muscles. Like the two I think really go well together. And I think so often, especially on social media, we see weightlifting and Pilates kind of pitted against each other. It's like this versus this. When in reality, they work really well together. And it's really, it's actually really good for us to cross train and to do different kinds of 
of movement instead of just doing one type of movement forever and ever, right? It's, it's good for you, for your body and for your brain to cross train and you know, you will get better at both things. Like I'll get better and stronger at exercises in Pilates because I've worked on building up muscle with the weight training routines, but I also get better at weightlifting because of what I do in Pilates. And I really like the mix of the two. Now to answer the question that I get all the time, like why are you adding in weight training? Is Pilates not enough? Pilates is enough. It is more than enough. Pilates is going to help you to build muscle. It's going to just like help you with your posture. It's going to help you with your breathing, with your mind muscle connection. Pilates is really good for a lot of things. It is more than enough. I didn't add in something else because I felt like Pilates wasn't enough. Like that's not the route that I went. That's not how I got to where I am. For me personally, because Pilates is my job, when it comes to my personal fitness routine, I can't just do Pilates or else it feels like I am never getting a break from work. So for me, it's really much more of a, a mental aspect and like the mental boundary between what is work and what isn't work. So for me, that's why I'm adding in weightlifting. And, and also I need to be like a certain level of strong to be able to carry on with what I'm doing in my job. Like I need to have strength to be able to do a class and show you all of the options, whether they're progressions or modifications, I need to have that stamina and that strength to be able to go through my like daily tasks of my job. So that's why I do that. Pilates is more than enough. And if you wanna do Pilates every single day, you can and you will see progress, you will see results, you will get stronger. But if you don't want to do Pilates every day, you don't have to and you shouldn't have to. Um, I know for me with the classes that I teach, like I teach such a, um, a contemporary blend of things where I incorporate some weightlifting stuff with Pilates strength classes. I incorporate some, some different things with performer on the mat classes with the sliders. And you know, we get, we get a lot of things from the Pilates classes that I teach because I never want you to feel like you're not getting everything you want from my classes. I want you to feel like you have a well-rounded routine and you're getting a little bit of strength training. You're getting a little bit of flexibility, mobility. You're getting the, you know, the strict classical Pilates things too. And that's why I do it that way. Cause I, I want everyone to feel like they're really getting a well-rounded routine and like they don't have to have a thousand memberships, you know, to 10 different gyms. But again, for me, it's really more of a, a mental boundary of Pilates is work. Weightlifting or the Pilates that I do in the morning is not. I think both are great. Obviously I love Pilates. I don't have to talk about how much I love Pilates. <laughs> like it just gets a little bit redundant to a point, but both exercise modalities are great. One is not better than the other. When you're looking at exercise, at your exercise routine and like what you want to do and what you should be doing, there is not a right and wrong. And I think if you are currently doing like a weightlifting program, but you feel like you have trouble staying consistent and you're not engaged and you're not motivated, it's good for you to try something else and to do more than one kind of exercise so that you can stay engaged and motivated and uh, you know wanting to actually do your workout there's nothing wrong with doing weightlifting and Pilates at one time. You don't just have to do weightlifting. You don't just have to do Pilates. You can do both. You can also do running. You can walk, you can play tennis. Like there's so many things that you can do. So when it comes to figuring out what the, the right fitness routine is for you, there are a lot of factors that come into play. There isn't one right fitness routine for everybody that's going to give everybody the same results or these like amazing, fantastic, out of this world results because even if we all trained the same and ate the same, we would all still look different. But when you're looking at a routine and you're wondering, gosh, what should I do? What's better, this or that? The exercise that is the best for you is the one that you enjoy and that you feel like you can stay consistent with. Like bottom line, period. That's it. It doesn't matter what these trainers or fitness influencers say on TikTok. What you enjoy is what is going to help you to be consistent and maintain a, a long relationship with fitness for as long as, as you want to. And it will give you the benefits that you are seeking. Is weightlifting good 
for everybody to build bone density? Yes. Is Pilates good for everybody to help with their posture and their breathing? Yes. Are they both going to help you, you know, give you a little bit of resistance training? Yes, absolutely. One is not better than the other. And I want, I want to reiterate that fact as much as I can, because I think so often we see on social media and just like, I don't know, any platform that gives a fitness influencer or an influencer in general, a, a microphone and the opportunity to say, this is how I work out and this is how I eat and this is why I look like this. Like people on the internet demonize like one kind of way of working out over the other. And it, it really, it shouldn't be like that. So I always recommend to people to pick the form of exercise that you like pick the form of exercise that fits into your routine. A question I get asked very often is how often should I be working out? How long should my Pilates workouts be? And the answer is always, it, it depends. It depends what your routine looks like. If you can work out, you know, two times a week, great. If you can work out for 30 minutes, great. If you only have 10 minutes, great. Like it's, it's really, it, it doesn't matter necessarily. Like you, you want to just try and move for as much or as little as you feel like you can. And those little actions over time are what is going to add up. It's, it's kind of, I don't, I can't think who, who uses this term. I feel like my friend, Laura Gerard, who I love and you should all follow. She has a podcast called Fit Literate where her, and I cannot think of her friend's name. I want to say it's Carolyn, but I don't think that it is. Caroline, maybe it's Caroline, but they're, po I'm so sorry. Their podcast, Fit Literate, they, they talk very in depth about a lot of, of fitness topics and that's not what this podcast is, but they do that. And if that's what you want, um, I would go check out their podcast. But um, I know Laura uses this and then my friend Lauren Level, she uses this a lot too, gentle consistency. Gentle consistency is what's going to help you to reach your fitness goals and what's going to help you to create a long lasting fitness routine overall. So it's not setting these, these harsh guidelines for yourself and beating yourself up when you don't meet them, beating yourself up when you miss a workout. It's, you know, looking at your week and saying, okay, I have 20 minutes here. So maybe I can do a little bit of movement there. Oh, I have an hour here. Maybe I can do a little bit more there. Maybe I can go for a walk on this day. It's the, it's, it's being, gentle with yourself, being understanding with yourself, being nice to yourself and recognizing that fitness is not an all or nothing thing. I don't know how else to put it. It's not all or nothing. One is not better than the other, you know, all of the things that we can do to, uh, be more physically active, all of those things add up over time. I really don't know that I have more to say about that. Oh, actually I do. I had another comment and it may have been the same comment asking why I'm doing more weightlifting right now. And I think I, I think I answered that pretty well, but they also said like, you are the only Pilates instructor online that's saying that they're not doing just Pilates. And I don't actually think that's true because I don't follow everything Move with Nicole does, but she has shared before that she does weightlifting. And I think just about every group fitness instructor does some kind of weightlifting or resistance training, whether that's Pilates or like lifting up heavy weights, just about every fitness instructor ever is doing it, no matter what they say, no matter if the Pilates influencer you follow says that they're doing weights or not, they probably are. They probably are. I know Move with Nicole does. Other than that, it really does just kind of depend. You also have to take into consideration a lot of the people that are Pilates instructors, not me, but a lot of people that are Pilates instructors are ex-professional dancers or are genetically just genetically skinny and they live in those bodies and they only do Pilates and that helps them to maintain their physique. And a lot of other people aren't built. Like I'm not built like that. I'm built in a mus much more muscular frame, but you know, some people that are, have professional dance backgrounds, they do just do Pilates and that's all they've done for, you know, 20 years. I think you have to take everything that you see online with a grain of salt, because honestly, you don't really know what somebody is doing behind the scenes or behind closed doors. And I could be weightlifting without anyone knowing it and just still saying online that I just do Pilates, but I choose to be open and honest with you guys because I never want anyone to think that I look the way I do just from doing my own classes. Like I do stuff out 
outside of what I teach. And I wish everyone were as transparent about that as I am, but you know, sometimes it affects their bottom line. Anyway, <laughs> if you have more questions about, or if you want me to talk more about, you know, Pilates and weightlifting or just like cross training in general, what my opinions are on any like Pilates related things, I'm happy to talk more about those things, but I think I am going to call it an episode right there. Um, let's chat quickly about um, new things that I've been enjoying this week. Let's, and let me just think. Um, I finished another book this week, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly something. I cannot think of her last name. Um, everything I know about love, it's kind of written in a memoir style. And I was just listening to, um, the redheads book club, which is where I get all of my book recommendations. I was just listening to their episode on it and they said it, it, it is a memoir. You know, it's like about, it's about her life. I, at first I wasn't super into it. I think my biggest um, critique with the book is that some of the chapters are a little bit too long, but at the end, I did end up really liking it. She kind of makes a commentary on, on friendships and not necessarily like romantic love. It's more like your friends and family love. Um, and she talks a lot about her relationships over her life and it kind of, I feel like it starts when she's like 15 and kind of ends when she's about 30. I, I don't know. I, I really did like it. I thought it was enjoyable. It was interesting. It's always interesting to get a peek behind somebody else's curtain and see what's going on in somebody else's life. I think that is kind of fun, but I did, I did really like it. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it to other people. I recommended it to my mom and she said she could not get into it, but that is the book that I finished. Most recently, I've started reading The Fourth Wing, which is the next Redheads Book Club book. It is like 700 pages. It is like set in a, I don't know what you would call it, but it's more of like a fantasy book, which isn't, it's not always my first choice, but I've only ever been steered wrong by the Redheads Book Club one time, and it was The Magnolia Palace. I did not like that book. I did not finish it, and that is the only time that's happened. So I'm gonna stick it out with this book and see how it goes. I haven't necess I haven't really consumed any new content this week. I'm trying to think if there's anything, I mean, I'm trying to create some new content this week, like new kinds of content. I get so many questions from Pilates instructors about how I plan my classes and I'm trying to create more content in that's like helpful in that kind of realm. So I'm working on some of that stuff. I have some plans and ideas to maybe revamp the beginner series on my channel, hoping I can do that this month, uh, but we will see. Uh, the other new thing that I haven't started yet. Oh, I've kind of been putting it off. I'm doing a Taylor Swift series in my virtual studio. That's really, it's just gonna be like Pilates classes with Taylor Swift music underneath so we can do Pilates and sing along to Taylor. Um, I'm working on those classes, not actively, but the classes are coming. Um, and it, by the time you see this, if this, if you ever see this, those classes should be out in the virtual studio. They'll only be available to virtual studio members though. So that's a good call out. Gosh, I can't really think of, Ooh, another new thing that I, have implemented onto the channel. I don't know if I can say I've been enjoying it yet, but maybe maybe by the time this episode comes out, I will be enjoying it more. I created channel memberships for my channel and we do like two live stream classes a month. There's two membership tiers. I have, right now I have two members and you're wonderful if you're my member. Nobody comes to the live streams. So if you want to be a member or excuse me, or you wanted to take live stream classes, maybe you want to take the classes that I do on Zoom, but the um, my virtual studio membership isn't quite for you. This is a good way to get a live stream class. And um, there's two membership tiers. One is $5, one is $10. And I would love to have you in a live stream. I think that can wrap up all of the new stuff this week. If you have it, Anything that you want to hear me talk about in future episodes, please let me know those things down in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, if you have any like hot takeaways from this episode, or you want to give your opinion on Pilates versus weightlifting, please let me know those things down in the comments. Remember, you're awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to, and I will see you back here for our next episode. Bye.